Hello everyone, I'm Man of Interests with This Week in Keyboards. Again for this week, because there's just so much news this week. If you haven't had a chance to see yesterday's episode, I highly recommend you go check it out because it covers all of the GMK news for the week. Most all of it. Today we'll be going over the GMK topics I missed, as well as the rest of the actual keyboard news <laughs> involving keyboards and some other stuff. Of course, before we get to the news, the sponsor of this episode. Go check out Novel Keys, where they are currently running the group buys for GMK Darling, Cam Ray, and GMK Zuyin. They're keeping busy running some of the best sets in the community, and joining during the group buy phase is the best time to join to get the best price. But hey, if you're buying any non-group buy items, use my promo code HueyHueyHuey for 5% off your order. Check out Novel Keys and my promo code in the link down below. Awesome. Okay, it's, yes, it's best that we start with the uh, topics we missed um, in the last episode. So over on Novel Keys, there's GMK Zuyin, designed by Hudro Thrillson and One Creative Mind. This Alpha's add-on kit features Mandarin phonetic symbols, which are used in the transliteration system of Taiwan. There is both a black on white and a white on black set for Zuyin. The MOQ is 250 and each Alpha set will cost you $70. Not bad to be honest, and it gives us different sub-legend flavor that we don't normally see. An awesome thing about this set is the fact that it supports Habitat for Humanity, so that's just awesome and A+, in my opinion. Please check it out on Novel Keys. Next up over on Dixie Mech is GMK Modern Dolch Lite. It's already sold over 1,000 base kits, and it's going for $100 per base kit, and will be running until March 1st with a Q4 expected shipping. Designed by both Dixie Mech and Younglad, it's a very simple light set that is very attractive to a lot of people. The base kit shaves off the numpad and ISO keys, letting us drop to that $100 price point. If you want icons, it's $40 for that modern kit. I think this is a pretty interesting iteration on Modern Dolch. This is definitely a nice neutral set that will find a home in anyone's keyboard repertoire. And if you get it, use my, use my link, which I'll, I'll put down below. Next on Keyset News, we have an interesting update. Mateo has posted that it's time to start preparing for Dev TTY2 by letting us know what kits to expect. This is really exciting because even though Drop has been selling kits from Dev TTY from time to time, they rarely have all the keys that or kits that you want. They're mostly supporting their own boards at the moment. But now from this, we know Dev TTY2 is launching properly around the corner, so it'll be much easier to get certain keys found in the first round, uh, which are much harder to find now. As a personal note, I really like how MT3 feels, and I'm looking forward to getting some more Dev TTY2. I had some complaints with the Legends for the first round, but hey, I'm sure they'll have them improved for this round. Yay. Our next group buy is also pretty high profile. It's Cat Lucky Jade, which is designed by Hisui and currently running on Canon Keys. This cat set is inspired by Chinese culture, featuring two shades of jade green with white accents, as well as Kangji Alphas for those desiring a very busy but traditional alpha set. I really like the look of the alphas in the Wubi alphas kit, despite how busy they are. I'm just not sure about how I really feel about the greens that are used. Alphas will be either $35 or $37, depending on which one. TKL modifiers are around $60, so putting together a set for most compatibility will set you back over $100 before shipping, unless you also desire the novelties or are looking to pick up a few more kits from compatibility. It's a maybe for me, just because of those alphas. Let's head back to Novel Keys really quick because there's a set that I've been following the progress of quite a bit on Keep Talk. Cam Wraith by Beep. I like this set. It's inspired by the Sinclair ZX Spectrum from 1982 and aims to have that 80s aesthetic with double colored legends. Ooh. The keycaps will be PBT and made from Dai Sub Legends, of course, so this scratches an itch for me. The base price, $95, makes it really tempting to get. For those of you who may not have tried Cam Profile, it's simply the flat version of Cat by simply making every key Cat Row 3. It's not as tall as an SA Row 3, but it's taller than DSA, and it feels way nicer. And in my opinion, it sounds way nicer, so yay! 
Another cat group buy that's gonna be running this month is Cat Oasis over on Kono.store. This set was designed by Jane J. St. S., sorry, and has the goal of capturing the mysterious essence of desert existence to place beneath your fingertips. Most uniquely is the Arabic alpha kit for some foreign flair. I think it's uh, it's interesting that there are a lot of options for this set. Traditional Latin alphas, the um, Arabic alphas, and even blank alphas. Oddly, the modifiers only come in blank or Latin, but there is an option between the blue or darker brown ones. Personally, I like the darker brown alphas uh, a lot. It's really, really deserty. I'm not sure about how I feel about the blue, despite the namesake of this set. Lastly, on the key set news, is the Indistract for PBT Delftware by Zephrayon. Sorry. Ultimately, it is a blue on white set, but may have some cute sub symbols on some of the keys to reflect its inspiration based from porcelain art. It's nice, and simple, cool. The base kit does look extremely expansive and will cover a good deal of compatibility, so that's going to be a plus for many. It's not a bad idea, and hopefully it continues to grow and develop as an interest check. Okay, I know a lot of you have been waiting to get to the keyboard news, so here we go. We're gonna start it big, really big. You better get ready. An ergo-inspired board, of course, for 2020. Eight degree typing angle, via compatible. You interested? Oh yeah. It's the interest check for the Drink Me 4% Ergo Macro, what the heck? Okay, 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 okay. You know what, it's cute AF. I'll give it that and it's only $45. Go check out the interest check. It's macro bad. But really let's get to a size bigger than 4%. The next interest check we have is the RP60 by Dopamine, which is an interesting looking sandwich mount board. The board has a really cool top piece that really completes the seamless design look with some flair on the top and the back. So far we don't have any details aside from these renders, but uh, it looks interesting. Hopefully we'll get more details like, you know, the angle, weight, plates. It's a start. It's a start. Next up, we have the interest check for the slice, an Alice split 60 by two moons. You take an Alice, you slice it in half, and you get your slice. Slices. Should be plural, right? It's definitely a very DIY kind of board, but it's, it's pretty cool of an idea. There will be an option for 3mm acrylic or 1.5mm steel plates. The layout is similar to that of an Alice with some changes that you can see here. This definitely looks to be a very cost-effective board. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. And hey, there's also going to be an RGB version if that's your jam. Moving on to the well-known TX keyboard, you may have already been clued in that they are running several group buys. TX66, TX65 V2, TX60 V2 HHKB, and the TX660 C case. Oh yeah, and the TX60 V2 win key. Yeah, there's a lot of options with the new V2 side design featuring that brass bit on the side. But in my opinion, the really cool case is that 660C case that fits on the Leopold FC660C. It's a great thing for Topra fans. It kind of makes me think, would this project even exist without like Ryan Norbauer really diving into bringing more Topra uh, board cases to the community? I know he isn't the first to do so, but it probably, you know, is probably the most well known in this category. So. It's really cool that TX Keyboards is also taking the same approach and making a case for a Topra board. So how about the new V2 side? And to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan. I already have two TX60s that I enjoy quite a bit with their simplicity, but hey, I can't knock TX for trying something new. The prices on these boards vary, but expect to spend greater than $400 after fees and shipping. TX perhaps isn't the strongest or most well-known brand, but they're undeniably a solid brand in our hobby with their keyboards. If only they could do something to improve those Swiss cheesy bottom rows on their plates. The next keyboard is now available as a group by that started three days ago. It's the Project Nebula version S by Mickey Berry. This TKL features a top mounted plate, sandblasted brass weight, seven to eight degree typing angle, a silver plate, QMK PCB with a USB mini port, and of course, all encased in aluminum, and it will weigh about 2.3 kilograms unbuilt. You'd expect to spend $420 on this very, very unique looking keyboard. The back and sides are eye catchers that are going to draw a lot of people to this board, especially at a meetup. 
This board is also available in a lot of colors. Lavender, silver, pink, dark purple, black, red. As of writing this to color, uh, color, the current numbers of boards purchased are 57. Mickey Berry needs to hit a 100 unit MOQ. It's all first come first serve. And that's, that's gonna be the total number that they're, they're gonna hit. In terms of shipping estimates, expect a delay with everything going on in China. So five plus months, unfortunately. Going up in price, but down in size, it brings us to our next board, the J02 by J of Prototypist and Top Clock. It's a gasket mount 60% with a USB-C daughter board, fixed carbon fiber plates, a magnetically attached pen rail, and a seven degree typing angle. All of this is gonna cost you 420, sorry, $460 for the standard version available on Canon keys with 100 units available. There will also be 50 units available on My Keyboard EU for the Europeans and 50 more available in Asia through Ilum KB. With the brass pen rail and brass ring around the board, it's certainly quite the looker for a lot of people. The top will be available in Win Keyless, Full 60, and HHKB. And I'm not in the market to get a board this expensive for what it is at the moment, especially when I have a shelf dedicated to 60% without enough room to spare. Mm. While I'm not looking to get this board, I can understand the appeal a lot of people have and would be in it to win it for. So good on them and I hope it goes well for everyone. Let's move on to another interesting board, but it's interesting not because of the board itself to be honest, it's because of its origin. Let's talk about the Monstar Gear Alu XO V2 DIY kit. Before we actually get to this board, the interesting part is Monstar Gear. So who are they? Monstar Co. LTD is a venture company that specializes in custom water-cooled PC parts, premium assembled PCs, audio equipment, and other custom PC parts and products. Now they're also an official import partner of Zeal Switches, and it looks like they wanna work on keyboards in addition to PC cases and their other gaming and PC peripherals. So what does this PC maker have for us? Well, it's not a horrible proposition. The Alu XO V2 DIY kit is a TKL featuring a brass plate, brass weight, aluminum housing, USB-C port, their own proprietary software for programming, SMD LEDs, and all of this is $300 before fees and shipping. It's not a horrible looking board to be honest, but it's odd it does come with plate mounted stabs, but I guess that's like the OEM influence. But yeah, it is what it is. Since it is a gaming peripherals company, you can't escape the RGB LEDs. It's not my cup of tea, but honestly, it's a solid attempt for a company traditionally not in our sphere of keyboard enthusiasm. So good on them, and I hope they make more products to really push enthusiasm into their market. Last on the keyboard news uh, for keyboards is the Evolve by Nathan Alphaman of Alpha Studios. Let's focus on the eye catchers. That plate, whoa. That's an intense plate. It definitely has a very unique look and it's designed to have even flex on every key press for a very unique typing experience. You also need to desolder or, you know, to, to swap or fix your stabs. It's really interesting. And while we're still waiting on the design write up from Nathan on the plate and we're supposed to refrain from commenting how it's gonna break, but uh, come on, my last relationship had more support than some of those switches. But hey, if the math works out, cool. The plate is also integrated with the top, which is interesting as it's been, integrated plates have been met with mixed appeal in our community. I'm really curious about the whole design process and that document, uh, to be perfectly honest, it's like the most interesting thing right now. Moving on to the bottom of the board, it's an interesting and stunning visual accent. It does look very unique and has said to be able to support a truck of weights truck of weights. It's definitely a radical look and all this is achieved by 3D printed ALSI 10MG. What is that? No actual clue. 3D printed metal, I, I guess? Yeah. How about the rest of the details? 7.5 degree typing angle, just one color option for the top, keep it simple, via compatible PCB, USB-C port, uh, approximately three kilograms unassembled, and the price is estimated to be a very large number. It's a very interesting idea. I have two personal nitpicks. First, that 1.5U right shift. The reason stated was to have arrows lining up neatly with the right mods, allowing for a continuous 0.25U bezel. I don't personally agree with this, but at least the designer has a very solid reason for wanting them to want to pursue this path. So that's on them. Second, I'm just not a fan of rotary encoders or knobs of any kind when, because the support for them within QMK and VIA is still very lacking in my opinion and not the easiest to use for people like me who can't program. 
Despite all of these different things, I'm extremely curious and excited to see where this keyboard will go. Like, it's really cool, really different, really unique. Despite the things I don't like about it, it's so cool. Okay, that's it for actual keyboard interchecks and group buys, but this news doc, it keeps going, baby, and we still got six topics left. I promise they're gonna be way shorter than the ones I just covered. First, back to novelty, novel keys for the Olivia++ Plus Plus stabilizers. They're stabilizers manufactured by C3 and done as a collaboration between novel keys and the key company, featuring rose gold um, bar, a color matched housing and stem. It's $15 pre-order price. It's gonna include 7U stab, 6.5, 2.5U stabilizer, uh, 6.2U stabilizers, and 16 screws as they're all screw and stabilizers. This is a pre-order and they aren't going to arrive until May or June, so plan accordingly if you need stabilizers down the road. I haven't tried C3 stabilizers yet, but I do want to grab some of these pink Olivia stabilizers because I have a build there that they'd be pretty on point with. Next up, Cherry. At CES, they unveiled the new Cherry uh, Viola switch, which is a low cost mechanical alternative to rubber domes that features an MX Cruciform for MX keycap compatibility, four millimeter travel, yada, yada, yada. They just released a video on the switches on YouTube, which I recommend you check out. It's about seven minutes long, includes your CES trip, as well as words from their head of technology and partner marketing, Michael Schmid, as well as their engineering director, Werner Keck. It's a very good video if you wanna know more about the switches, and I really hope these switches take off in the under $100 market to get a lot more people into pimping out keyboards. I think it's cool as an idea and it's still going to offer people a fully mechanical experience. So just check out the video. I, I think it's cool. It's really good. Next up is a nice video for those of us who have frosted polycarbonate keyboards. Ryan Norbauer has released a 12 minute video on how to maintain your frosted polycarbonate keyboard, which I highly recommend watching if you have a polycarb board or are considering getting one in the future. Seriously, check it out. It'll be good maintenance tips that I need to do and you may need to do as well. Moving on, we have some meetup news. Yay, KeyCon tickets. They're now available on Eventbrite. KeyCon 2020 will be held in Denver, Colorado on Saturday, June 13th at the EXDO Event Center. Once again, a huge thanks to Matt, AKA Jacob's Mirror, for putting all this together. Get your tickets and hopefully we can all see each other at KeyCon 2020. And the meetup news doesn't end there because I have been in talks with PFU Fujitsu because they have told me they are interested in hosting a meetup. I have talked to them on the phone twice already and I have another meeting scheduled with them later this week. I'm hoping very soon I can tell you all the information about this upcoming event that they've been working on really hard. It'll be in the Bay Area and I'll be sure to keep all of you in the loop as soon as I can. Last in the news is a shout out that I want to make. There is a channel I have discovered called Almost Weekly Keyboard News. They are a Japanese keyboard program doing their best to provide content to the Japanese keyboard enthusiast community. And it's awesome. They're VTubers, which is virtual YouTubers. And I really hope somehow, some way I could work with them in the future because they just seem really cool. I enjoy their vibe, even though I don't really understand what's happening because I only speak English, but most of their recent content is them streaming live on YouTube. So if you get a chance, hop in their stream, say hi to on their weekly, almost weekly show. That's it for this long and almost exhausting week of this week in keyboards. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't, please consider liking and subscribing. It really means a big deal to this channel. I'm slowly but surely making my way to the 5K subs mark. Yes. Don't forget to check out the sponsor of this episode when you get a chance. And you can check out all the topics and their links down below. I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>